My name is Roland Wagner. Today I will be presenting the new features in Codesys for the second quarter of 2025, briefly and concisely. You can find more detailed information about bug fixes and improvements in our release notes and teaser notes. Codesys file-based storage is the first new human-readable project format that replaces the classic Codesys version 3 project file .project.library with a structured folder and file system. The source code and other project components are stored directly in files, which is ideal for version control, code reviews and collaborative development. Existing projects can be easily converted using the conversion function which includes automatic quick fixes for typical problems. A Codesys Professional Developer Edition license is required for a file-based storage. Please note, not all features such as archive creation and user management are available yet. Codesys Git does not yet support the new storage format either. Nevertheless, file-based storage paves the way for a modern, transparent PLC software development. For more detailed information on Codesys file-based storage, please refer to the white paper linked in the video description. With the new preview version of Codesys simulation interface, we're taking a step toward professional software in the loop simulations. This is a generic interface that allows for common simulation applications to be conveniently connected to a controller via a toggle switch using OPC UA PubSub and standardized information models. The simulation interface is not identical to simulation mode in Codesys. It enables the targeted control of machine simulations with the real application and works depending on the target system with both hardware and soft PLCs without simulating field bus communications or timing. Numerous common simulation tools such as FE ScreenSim, ISG Virtuos, Simit will support the simulation interface in the future. To get access to this pre-release, just reach out to Codesys Sales. Support of the Serif format facilitates the export and import of analysis results for CI CD toolchains. You can now open the desired POU in the metrics view. The current version 5.1.0.0 brings many improvements and bug fixes, especially to reduce false positives and false negatives in important check routines such as address and size of, alias variables, and case statements. You can now also apply some quick fixes for the entire project. In addition to many Codesys based PLCs from various device manufacturers, the Codesys automation server has always supported native Codesys control SL runtime systems. With this update, a series of backend enhancements increases compatibility with PLCs from additional device manufacturers. The Codesys automation server now also supports new manufacturers and devices, such as the M10 and M20 series from Anido. Previously, after three failed login attempts, another login attempt was blocked for 30 minutes. Administrators can now override this timeout if necessary. Affected users can then log in again immediately. We have revised the display and calculation of the safety application ID. You can now conveniently read it via the context menu. In addition, the connection to the safety controller is no longer interrupted when compiling the standard application. With the support of new devices, including the EL6633, expanded GSDML import options, 
and automatic creation of profi-safe devices during GSTML import, integration is now much easier. We have now enhanced diagnostics with new icons, an improved status page, and a data valid signal. This, along with improvements in I.O. handling, ensures greater transparency and stability. In addition, there are many usability optimizations in the configurator. The new update brings noticeable improvements to the ladder diagram editor. Performance has been optimized, including better processing of call types. New tooltips for variables simplify commenting out. New markers make it easier to create parallel branches. And in online mode, the full value is displayed when hovering over the element. We have corrected an error in the execution of parallel branching. The letter editor now behaves in the same way as the LDFBD editor. When importing LDFBD POUs and in new ladder projects, the processing sequence is now the same as in LDFBD. In existing ladder projects, users are notified of differences in the processing sequence. You can convert to the old sequence for each network or for the entire project. If changes are made to the network, the processing sequence is converted automatically. Errors have also been fixed when importing PLC Open XML files and during automation variable declaration. In addition, there is now a warning for unassigned contacts. This allows you to identify sources of error at an early stage. Structured variables can now be updated much faster and we have significantly improved code generation for large recipes with array structures. In addition, numerous bugs have been fixed, including problems with Unicode in arrays and errors with array sizes. The new version of the IIoT libraries now enables communication with Azure IoT Hub via WebSockets proxies and introduces a completely new library for weather forecasts by OpenWeather. The AWS IoT Core Client library supports MQTT version 5 features and sample projects have been integrated into the online help. The latest update brings full and certified support of the OPC UA Embedded Device Profile and, for the first time, fully compliant OPC UA alarms, alarms and conditions. A new dialog with extended options allows for flexible configuration of OPC UA data sources and longer strings. Performance and stability when browsing OPC UA data sources have been significantly improved. OPC UA data source certificates now comply exactly with the OPC UA specification and can therefore be validated more easily by the server. You can now trigger alarms specifically via API and we have improved the performance of alarm tables and histories significantly. WebWizu supports automatic login e.g. in Chrome. File access is now more secure thanks to file access protection and visualization can use the real-time clock of the PLC. In addition, many usability features make work much more convenient. For example, you now have a separate login page and you can change table column width at runtime. The update provides encrypted communication between CodeSys development system and devices, as well as new diagnostic options via the Enable Sync Time Trace setting. For redundant data, you can now use the Registered Areas tab to configure whether this data should be synchronized with every IC task cycle or only once when the PLC or application is started. 
This improves performance and can reduce the PLC cycle time as less data needs to be exchanged cyclically. Softmotion 4.18.0.0 provides a high-resolution digital cam switch with preview. The cam programming has been expanded to include new segment types for modified sine and inclined sine waves and visualization elements. Automatic restart after communication loss simplifies the use of drives. Support of the SOE Server Drive over EtherCAD profile for drives has been improved. Control X drive from Bosch Rackthroth via SOE is now supported. Error and motion logging is now much more detailed in robotics applications and motions can be commanded with different acceleration and deceleration limits. The following products will enter the service phase within the next 12 months. Kotsu's application composed a single license on July 31st, 2025. Starting with the version 4.4.0.0 of the application composer, this add-on will no longer be required for licensing and can be licensed directly. Libraries with the prefix CAA, such as CAA Net Phase Service or CAA Behavior Module, on March 1st, 2026. There are better, more up-to-date alternatives for these libraries that offer the same functions. The libraries are now called Net-Based Services, Async Job Manager, Element Collections, Segmented Buffer Manager, Memory Block Manager, and Common Behavior Model. In particular, the library's CAA Real-Time Clock CAA DT Util Extern and CAA FB Factory on March 1st, 2026. The functionality provided by these libraries can be better achieved by other means. We provide information on alternatives in the help section, LibDev Summary. The following products will be discontinued and leave the service phase within the next 12 months. SMS service, library in Codes' IIoT libraries on March 1st, 2026. New devices will no longer send SMS messages. For a complete list of discontinued products and products in the service phase, please visit the Codes' website. Thank you for watching.